All right. Here's an echidna video that I think we can watch because this is from five years ago. So this is pre-season two. ReZero, why Subaru chose Amelia drunk explanation. My take on why Subaru chose Amelia is very simple. Dumb, horny, neat, has a lot of silver white haired figurine waifus that we've seen in season two in his room. He has a bias for these waifus. Amelia shows up and is one of the first people to actually help him in episode one when he was all alone. And then he also saw himself in Amelia about how selfless she was being, trying to make excuses about how, oh, this isn't for you. It's all about me, but how it can a, a person like that will forever waste her life. Maybe there was some resonance there. And then arc two, lap pillow, right? Lap pillow at that point, I think sealed the deal. At first, it was like love at first sight. I think it's more lust at first sight, simping over a white haired elf. And then after that, lap pillow, and then that's it. That's all it takes to, you know, get a down bad horny weeb and i don't think it's any deeper than that it's actually just that simple yo what's up youtube i'm well it doesn't really matter what my name is but i'm just some fuckhead who really likes re-zero and enjoys right. talking about it so anyway in this video i'm just gonna give my theory on why subaru loves amelia uh remember that this is all just the opinion of some loser on the internet so no need to waste the effort of getting angry about it like i said i love talking about re-zero so you know what that is Self-deprecating jokes to immediately put yourself in a position where you cannot be shit on because you have already denounced yourself. It's pretty smart. If you disagree with me, I will gladly have a discussion with you. Leave a comment or something. I don't, I don't know. So lots of fans seem to hate Subaru because of the uh, consensus that he should have chosen Rem. Nah. Episode 18, the people that hate on Subaru are just a bunch of socially inept weebs that have never interacted with an actual girl or knows about relationships. Just because Rem does that doesn't mean she's entitled to Subaru's love, of course. It's a time and place for everything. And to say I love Amelia and reject Rem at that moment is cruel. However, for the sake of content and making an impactful episode, that's why it happened like that. And on top of that, it's better that he doesn't lead her on and immediately tells Rem how things are. Some YouTubers like Giguk have said that Subaru's love for Amelia makes no fucking sense. It really doesn't, until you realize that this is just a dumb fucking 17-year-old that has an obsession for half-elves, fucking white-haired girls, and how she showed a little bit of attention for Subaru in the earlier parts of ReZero. It makes a lot of sense if you realize that Subaru is a fucking dumb 17-year-old neat. Which is understandable from the outside. But I want to delve deeper into human psychology for a bit to Ooh. understand why Subaru likes Amelia. I don't have a degree in this shit or anything, so please excuse my high school education on the subject, but I believe there's something called the anchoring bias. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Anchoring bias. So, in terms of... Okay, so let's say you go into a Costco, right? What do you first see? What you'll first see is a bunch of TVs, very expensive products, right? You see the number, it's in the thousands. And now you've been anchored to that number. And then as soon as you get out of that intro part of Costco, you get to see some other products, more reasonable prices. Even though they might not be still the best prices, you've been anchored to that big number. Therefore, suddenly, you feel like this is a fine price. Because again, you have a bias reference. You've been anchored to the high numbers. It's something like you anchor down or you heavily rely on the first piece of information you receive about a certain subject. In Subaru's mm -hmm. case, Amelia is the first thing to make a real impression on him after he gets a sec eyed. This causes Subaru to grow attached to Amelia simply because she's his first real interaction. Yep. It's like in high school when you get a study guide for your exam. Usually you're going to remember the first thing on that sheet of paper, right? For so sure. yeah, Subaru falls victim to the anchoring bias. Another thing Amelia does is she gives Subaru a fake name. It is human Satala. nature to seek the truth shortly after discovering a lie. This is another event that compels Subaru to seek out Amelia. Hmm, the Satala thing makes Subaru wants to know why she lied to him about that. She never really brings that up after the first run, huh? Think about that. He may have called her Satala at the end of episode 1, and he fucked up there because in that timeline, of course she never told him to call him that, but maybe because of that harsh reaction, Subaru never brought it up that like, would you ever call yourself Satala, stuff like that, right? And like, how would you even tell her that? Like, oh, in the first run, of course you can. That's, that's a, you know, we presumably have a pact with Satala that prevents him from saying that shit. When someone lies to you, even something as small and insignificant as the name of a stranger, you're inevitably gonna indirectly place more value on the mm. truth. Subaru began to value Amelia more because of a simple lie she told. Now <laughs> a girl lies and you fucking fall for it. Fucking white knight simps, bro. 
<laughs> but hey, what do we have so far? Anchoring, right? First girl that actually showed attention and saved him when he was alone in this world. And the lie that makes us feel very mysterious and wants to seek out the truth. Two components so far. Now, obviously, Amelia didn't do this intentionally, considering she is the mentality of a 14-year-old, but it still affected Subaru nonetheless. Now, think back to high school when you had a... I thought that she did call, uh, tell Subaru Satala intentionally to see what kind of reaction he would have, to see if he would show any prejudice or discrimination or be unaware of this fact, or maybe he even knows, but he's willing to look past that and show her favorability. And that's why I think that the first run was such a magical run in terms of affection and romance, but I don't think we're ever going to get to that level. A crush on that one special girl. When her hot friends talked to you, it felt good, but you probably didn't care as much, did you? That's because you already had a goal. As charming as Rem is, yeah. Subaru had previously set Amelia as his goal, mm -hmm. causing Rem to seem lesser in his mind. Absolutely. Right, we've been anchored to Amelia from the beginning. All the motivations to save Amelia was very strong all throughout Arc 1. And then in Arc 2, we meet Rem. And you have to also realize that Rem tortured Subaru. Of course, I go on to say that Rem then sacrificed herself to help Subaru, you know, not die from the curses by almost risking her life, right? Not even almost, she pretty much all, all did, right? And then there's also even greater moments in Arc 3 where she's like the focus of the pillar of support and she continues to sacrifice herself for Subaru. So I don't think like that torturing thing necessarily overrides any sort of affection for Rem, but still, all those events happened after Amelia has been anchored as a bias. It seems that after we get closer and closer to episode 18 of the anime where Rem is in the entire spotlight, that we start to forget the magnificent impression that Amelia initially leaves on Subaru. Remember that early in episode 1, he states to Puck that he believes Amelia is the type of person who will end up sacrificing everything. Yes, right? Sacrificing everything, trying to be like selfless, and but uh, at the same time saying like making excuses, thinking like, no, I did it all for me. And I think that this type of characteristic behavior is something that Subaru is also very familiar with because he exhibits that kind of behavior often. So he's kind of like, oh no, I've wasted my entire life doing that shit. I can't wait, you know, make this girl do it too. Everything for others, inevitably wasting her own life away. In the same episode, Amelia states something similar about Subaru. Remember that opposites don't attract. We are psychologically compelled to gravitate towards those who are similar to us. I mean, if, if I found- Opposites don't attract? I thought opposites do attract. Am I wrong here? Like, both can be true, but like opposites attracting, isn't that a common theme of like two, persona, per two personas like clashing? Like both can be true. A girl who loves ReZero as much as I do, I'd be all over her, but I haven't, so I'm single and alone. The name Echidnut. Why is it Echidnut? Because Echidnut is Echidna, but he cooms to Echidna, therefore it's Echidnut. That's alright. In 5 to 10 years, we will have AI sex bots and you can make your own Echidnut robot. But anyway, Amelia is good-natured in the same way that Subaru is, causing him to subconsciously feel for her. Subaru also admires Amelia as a person, especially mm. when she does good deeds such as deciding to help that lost lolly find her parents. Mm -hmm. Subaru also recognizes Amelia as a powerful and mysterious mage, and the mysterious part is what's important. Amelia's not a mage. If you're a true fan of Reason, she is a spirit art user. Important. The unknown engages our curiosity, making Subaru more and more interested in Amelia. Now, considering all these facts, it makes sense that Subaru has some special feelings for Amelia. Mm. Any of us would feel the same way about her if, you know, we got Isekai'd in Subaru's place. But yeah, for sure. I, I don't know if Amelia would be the girl I'd be simping for. I might be simping for Ram, but... For sure, like, again, think about it. 17-year-old kid, neat from Japan, nothing done with his life, horny as fuck down bad for white hair girls, and finds the exact type that he likes, saving him. And he has the pride and ego of a fucking archbishop. He probably thinks he's a fucking chosen one thinking, oh my god, silver hair elf, this is my moment to shine. I think it makes a lot of sense. But keep in mind that Subaru was previously like us. He was a Hikikomori otaku. Us? We? Listen, I'm different, okay? Actually, not anymore. Because I'm unemployed now. And I just stream all day long. You know what? Yeah, I am a neat. Yeah. 
who, who binged light novels in his room until his mom called him for dinner. It is universally understood that the possibility of living the life of a harem MC is fundamentally unrealistic. Subaru knew this. He understood that even though he got teleported to a fantasy yeah. world, it's still extremely unlikely that his hypothetical anime is a harem. That is why- I mean, if you really wanted to go the harem route, it's it's looking like very possible, right? Like, Rem would be down, Amelia, maybe we can win her over later on, Pot- Petra is super down, but we gotta give her way more time, right? Patrash? Listen, let's not discriminate just because she's a land dragon. Why he rejects Rem after she confesses to him. Subaru does indeed love Rem, but he understands that he can't choose her because he had already chosen Amelia. Mm. Now, let me be honest with all of you, I'm pretty fucking hammered. I'm not in the ideal state. <laughs> yeah, it says, <laughs> drunk explanation, so keep going to be spewing out intelligent arguments about Japanese cartoons. Remember, this was all just the opinion of some asshole with no credibility. So take it all with a grain of salt. Sure. If you disagree with me, let me know. I would love to have someone to talk about ReZero with. Anyway, I'm about to get into some spoilers. So if you haven't read any of the web novel, just... How much spoilers? You know, go ahead and get the fuck out. I'm not going to be spoiling any of season two, but I will. Okay, it's season one web novel content. I'm totally fine. We'll be spoiling some parts of the web novel that was cut from season one. Perfect. We need that cut content regardless. We're going to cover that in the witch cult translations later on too. So let's get it. That being said, let's get into it. Yeah. Subaru loves Rem. Sure. Yes. Yes, he does. Not to the same degree of Amelia. He admits this. He admits this to Amelia's face. He finds out Rem has been forgotten again, and he immediately slits his throat without yes. hesitation. This is at the end of arc 3, which is more episode 1 of season 2, but still, you know, it is still, I think, fair game. And, and the fact that, remember, when Subaru, before he slit his throat, in the carrots, before the whole revelation of Rem being, you know, erased by gluttony happened, right? Well, we don't know that, but it's about to happen, right, for us. Subaru feels the need to tell Amelia that, hey, you know, I feel kind of guilty. Why does he feel guilty? Because he acknowledges that Rem loves Subaru, right? If he was completely unaware, and, I, and like, I was like looking at this anime and thinking, does this motherfucker even know that Rem loves you? Even though she explicitly states it multiple times, even confesses and then rejects it, he does show that. And like, the fact that he felt guilty enough when approaching Amelia saying, you listen, you know, Rem confessed and I, I still said I love Amelia, right? I, I'm all for you. I, I think that does prove that like he is aware and like he is playing fair in attempt to proc his return by death mechanic. Subaru even admits that he loves Rem just as much as he loves Amelia. Really, just as much? Ooh. Yo, this is some like, weapon? This is some like ammo that like Rem Glazers should take right now. Take this passage out of the web novel and constantly fucking like use it in arguments to glaze Rem over Amelia. The thing is, in the earlier episodes of season one, he never got the chance to realize this. He was infatuated by Amelia because of the various reasons I stated mm -hmm. in the beginning of this video, but it was until halfway through season one when Subaru was in the capital with Rem that his feelings for Rem finally started to emerge from his subconscious. As humans, we tend to gravitate toward- Is this all true? So you're telling me in arc 3, before episode 18, when we're constantly fucking up and Rem is there by us, you're telling me that Subaru started to love Rem more and more? ...towards familiarity. In this part of the anime, Amelia wasn't there, but Rem was. Yeah. After spending enough time with Rem, Subaru finally understood how he felt about her. Really? Really? Because to me, it looked like he was just going on a fucking warpath, just completely blinded by wrath, that even if Rem is, you know, beside him and enabling and supporting him, he just continues to fuck up, and even though Rem shows support and emotional support, I thought that Subaru was just kind of using her because of how much she glazes, but he completely acknowledged the love. He's like, yep, at this point of the story, I love Rem just as much as Amelia, but because Amelia was the first one, I'm gonna go with her. The anime cut a few significant events, such as Rem faking her death after the battle with the white whale. Subaru thought she was dying, and she told him she wanted to hear him say that he loved her. Hmm. Subaru said it, thinking it was her dying wish. Really? Okay, this is significant. After getting what she wanted, she just popped back up and laughed at his ass. This character is widely considered to be the best girl in all the land. Yes. 
Ram is fucking peak. This was cut from season one, leading a lot of fans to hate Subaru, thinking that he only loves Amelia and doesn't care about Ram, but that's... Yeah, I guess with these extra cut scenes, it really does prove how... Like, Subaru actively saying these things definitely proves that, like, he does love Ram. But I love Amelia because she was the first one, and you're, you showed up a little bit too late. Wrong. Subaru does care about Ram. So the point I'm making is not that Subaru has chosen Amelia over Rem, that's false. Subaru views the two as equals. Subaru cares about Rem so much that she is a driving force for all his actions and entire arcs of the story. What I'm mm. trying to explain is why Subaru appeared to love Amelia more than Rem in season one of the anime. Okay. What it all boils down to are a few important parts of arc three that were cut from the anime, and I'm not entirely sure why they were cut but they explain so much about Subaru's motivations and his mindset as a whole. I Many see. fans of ReZero miss this and thus have formed false negative depictions of Subaru's character. No, I never had a negative depiction of Subaru's character because when I watched this shit, and I didn't watch this shit eight years ago, I bet a lot of fucking socially inept motherfuckers that's never actually had a relationship with a girl, that hasn't under even understand what a girl is even like, what, you know, relationship's supposed to be like, what social etiquette's supposed to be like, they immediately default onto fuck you Subaru because you said I love Amelia, right? They have no understanding of fucking intimate relationships and how things feeling should be handled. So I was always on Subaru's side. It was like offhanded comment at that moment. He was... Definitely in the right to tell her immediately and not lead her on. And again, Rem does, is not entitled for that answer just because she did all that. I think it makes a lot of sense, but it's just a shock effect, right? To, for him to do that at that time. Anyway, I love ReZero and I hope everyone else does too. Season 2 will without a doubt clear up many misconceptions that fans have about Subaru as well as the perception that the anime has giant plot holes it doesn't. Season 2 will explain a lot. Yeah? I love ReZero. It's my favorite anime. I hope everyone listening feels the same. If you enjoy this video, it doesn't matter. I'm not a real YouTuber. You know, sa actually save your subscription for people like Bento Reviews and Satsuki, Everything Animated, Rising Sun, all those fuckheads. They are much more credible than I am, and they really know what they're talking about. So, Blaze. yeah, shout out to everyone. Yeah, I don't know what the anime commentary community was like, you know, five years ago, but hey, kid, that's at almost 300,000 subs, man. Clearly, he knows what he's doing. So, hey, even if he downplays himself, I think the content that we've seen from him is pretty good. Please, go check out Echidna's channel. We're going to be farming a lot more videos. Yes, we're going to do the if routes. Don't worry about it, and I'll see you next time.